Ken Tolson, thanks so much for joining the Insurer TV. Thank you. Glad to be here. So we're going to talk about Gen AI. I wonder if we could start uh, with having you describe how the development of Gen AI amplifies the potential that artificial intelligence delivers. Yeah, so so generative AI, which you know, artificial intelligence has been around for for many many years, and we've used we uh, as a company have used you know used it in many scenarios. But generative AI uh, has really sort of accelerated the delivery of the capability around whether it's music or code or you know software code or text uh, and the ability to to iterate quickly um, that we really did not have. And, you know, you know these tools like OpenAI and, and others in this space have, I think, really accelerated the, the human understanding of what the possibilities are. So you're seeing a real tipping point, I think, right now in terms of what we can do with these tools and how these tools can impact, you know, every facet of life and magnify the human ability to, to iterate and to generate, um, you know, multiple scenarios and produce better outcomes as a result. So it's a, it's a really exciting time right now. And like I said, I think we are at a or past a tipping point for sure, uh, but we've still, I think, only scratched the surface of what we can do with these tools. Right. And is there a risk? Would you say that we're now talking about the introduction of a more revolutionary technology when we have not yet fully got a handle on traditional AI? Well, there, there's certainly risk anytime you introduce technology like that. And therefore, you know, staying true to privacy concerns and bias introduction and things like that, I we are very committed to keeping the, the so-called human in the loop, so to speak, to make sure that what we're generating goes through the right processes and the right controls to understand what we're doing. But again, it really does help the human magnify their productivity to iterate and to be able to generate in this space and actually lift redundant processes and heavy research processes off of the individuals themselves. But with any kind of powerful technology like this comes to risk. And you really need to, we really need to be cautious when it comes to how we move this forward and just diligent about our own controls, whether it's around privacy and data uh, and what we're doing with this and understand sort of those and, and anticipate those unintended consequences, I think, that can happen if we're not careful. Thank you. How does Gen AI take the potential of artificial intelligence to the next level in the claims context? So I can speak, you know, to our sort of exploration in this space. And we've been very, very cautious about where we focus the tool right now. So we have we've been working down a path of using artificial intelligence and machine learning to to examine first notice of loss data to help us better triage claims, to help us better um target the right flight path or the right adjudication channel for a claim itself. There's, you know, today there are more options than ever, more technologies than ever that for, for adjusters or claims uh, professionals to be able to use, but with those options as complexity. Uh, and this is where we see one really good and powerful use case for artificial intelligence, intelligence is to be able to examine that complexity, root out the real data and predict the outcome of claims based on you know, large amounts of data uh, that needs to be examined to be able to predict and help adjusters and help claim professionals be better at, at um, making decisions, help them make better decisions, and even lift some of that off of the adjuster and make them more productive. Triage is just one aspect. You know, you think about the complexities of coverage. Um, we have we have a model in production today that's actually examining uh, examining the the coverage interpretation based on the program itself. So very tailored to a particular coverage set uh, and predicting you know where the coverage issues might exist based on the evolving data landscape about a particular claim. So it's helping to inform the adjuster, manage those processes, uh, and be better informed, make better decisions, but not take the decisioning away from the adjuster. And Ken, what specific aspects of the claims management process are most conducive to the integration of Gen AI? And what could that mean for the customer experience? So really two, two responses to that is, is that the the anything that involves, you know, 
understanding large volumes of data, anything that, that really can be overwhelming or challenges an adjuster or the claims professional to understand from either coverage data, um, large amounts of data around a program or whatever are great use cases for generative or AI to analyze. But the customer experience piece is something that we see as a key deliverable um, for impacting customer experience, things like automating the responsiveness or providing status update to customers. We actually are using uh, generative AI to help us write better triaging questions and actually walk the policyholder through the FNOL process. It actually helps the adjuster ask better questions or the customer service rep ask better questions and based on the data that's being given. And the responsiveness now from these generative AI tools is so quick that we're actually able to, during the conversation, uh, be able to inform the adjuster about, you know, these three data points were mentioned, you should ask this. And that's what's really, truly amazing today is the speed and responsiveness and the ability to shape the conversation and get better results, drive better outcomes, and, you know, for the policyholder as well, while they're in the process of reporting the claim or even in the process of managing the claim itself. Can you explain the key stages involved in the integration of Gen AI into the claims environment? Well, it really comes down to first, you know, building the model itself and whether you're using a, you know, a general model or a very specific model around, you know, based on privacy and controls. And that's the first, I think the very first step that any organization needs to understand is what are the privacy concerns about whether you're, you're sharing intellectual property or not and how you build a large language model itself. And then secondly, it's about building in the decisioning, letting the large language, the model itself understand the decisioning that needs to happen or take place to drive, you know, the outcomes you're trying to do. That's the biggest challenge I think we in the insurance industry have today is getting your data into a position to be leveraged by AI to really get your decisioning around that data. Uh, so much, you know, le legacy data in the insurance space is unstructured or artifact driven and not truly data driven. So your, your newer iterations of technology in this space probably have an easier path to the AI uh, landscape itself and be able to leverage AI. AI, but everybody is getting there really quickly right now. And I think understands the, the challenges you have to get your, your decisioning models into a position to be able to do that. I think that's critical, though, is I, I bring this up all the time with our teams is making sure that we have insight into decisions that are made. So those decisions can be analyzed by these large language models and then be repeated. And we can build upon that from that point going forward. And what about training, Ken? How critical is it to successfully deploying and managing uh, Gen, uh, Gen AI related capabilities? Well, the training of it is, the beauty of it is it's an evolving tool. It grows with the decisioning and the sort of discipline of your organization as well, but you really do need to to, to have the, the discipline around making sure that you can leverage these tools going forward and you're constantly learning, no different than a human learning. It's just a different iteration. It needs millions of decisions, millions of data points, and it can manage a lot more data points than a human can, but you still have to train it. So that investment has to be made. Um, it's just a really quick iteration. Thank you. Can you talk about some of the potential pitfalls uh, that perhaps need to be front of mind in this integration process? Well, it comes down to the basis of what you're teaching the model with and whether you're introducing bias. Uh, and you you really need to be objective in this space. I think it's critical that uh, you have the right controls and compliance around what you're training the model with and also the output of the model as well. I think it's critical that we do a really uh, open and transparent um, assessment of what's going on with the model. And we, I talk about human in the loop all the time. We, at this point in time, will not be removing or, de or relegating decisioning to AI. It is really meant to be an augmentation tool to make the, the individual human decisioning better and better informed. But at the same time, it's about understanding the output and making sure that there, that bias hasn't crept in or ethical issues haven't crept into it. It's, 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 it's a complementary technology right now. And I don't see that changing uh, until we're much more mature in this space. Thanks, Ken. And can we turn now to ethical boundaries? How significant a threat is the potential for Gen AI to breach any ethical boundaries? And, and how do you address that threat? 
Well, I think we've seen already that there are, you know, whether it's bias or ethical boundaries, it, it really comes down to what you're training the model with. And so you have to be, um, again, transparent about whether what you're feeding the model to train it with, but also then scrutinize the output of that. And I think that's just that's another aspect of the compliance and controls we have to have around these tools. I, I, I don't think that those things um, should be barriers or obstacles to adopting the technology itself, but we need to go into it with eyes wide open to make sure we understand the risk involved uh, and then deal with that. You know, it, it needs to be more of a holistic approach across your organization to make sure that you're doing the right things with the technology and that that the group that, that you as an organization are comfortable with the output of technology. And I think transparency is a key to that. Would you say there are sufficient considerations of the potential reputational repercussions? Well, in our industry, brand is is critically important to creating confidence around um, uh, around the product, the financial instrument that we are providing and the safety we are providing in the claims. You know, I, I always say claims is where the promise is delivered from an insurance uh, contract. Um, and it, you will not find any carrier that doesn't take that as the utmost um, Con, you know, utmost importance in their organization to make sure they deliver on that promise. So any decisioning that happens uh, that may or may or may not leverage AI will be scrutinized to the same degree it always has been in this space. So I'm quite confident that these things, while there may be efficiency gains or productivity gains, it really is about driving better outcomes for the policyholder um, and the right outcomes. And, and the industry is very focused on whether it's accuracy, paying what is fair, what is accurate. I don't see that. That that focus will not change. It, it may be accelerated, you know, and hopefully drive better customer experience. But the, the way that you get to those outcomes is not going to change. And then, Ken, can you talk about how Crawford is integrating Gen AI into its claims ecosystem? So we have a number of instances globally focused on this. All of the business units um, from each of the sort of regions around the globe are focused on delivering use cases where they think that uh, Gen AI can have an impact to their business model, whether it's from efficiency or it's examining um, uh, coverage data or large amounts of data. Um, I we have And we are surfacing those use cases now and building models around that. Um, I mentioned earlier the, the concept of examining coverage. This is a really exciting space for me because coverage, you know, coverage and coverage documents can be massive um, and case law as well around claims itself. So we see that as a huge lifting point for the adjuster to be better informed about making decisions, understanding special exclusions or special limits in the claim itself. So what we're doing now is actually surfacing after we interrogate the details of the claim and providing insight into to what exactly could be special limits that are exposed or coverage pitfalls, or maybe even special experts they need to bring into the file itself based on legacy decisions that were made and the examination of the coverage. So we're really excited about the lift that can provide to adjusters. We're still, uh, and the next iteration of that is actually applying the quantum of the claim itself and providing a shell adjudication of the claim as well, which is sort of the next step in that journey. And then serve those things up to adjusters to say, this is sort of the shell of the claim is, is Gen AI sees it evolving and then take that to accelerate their adjudication process. It's not taking the adjuster out of the loop. It's help, hopefully providing a better informed adjuster, a more accurate adjuster, and a faster outcome generation for the policyholder. And then we're making big investments around the triage piece itself, better decisioning about the claim flight plan or the claim trajectory through its the course of its life cycle. Uh, and then we're looking at, at, at reporting and email generation as well, really to help drive customer experience, sort of the CX aspect of the claim itself to drive better touch points with the customer, provide more instant information and help us shape better questioning uh, through the reporting process as well. So there's and, and I still think we are just scratching the surface with this. I, as we educate our business leadership and our frontline employees as well about the possibilities, we have a, a process in place to continue to surface those types of use cases. And then it's just a matter of prioritizing those based on the, the, the models that we have built and where we need to focus those models going forward. Thank you, Ken. And then lastly, more broadly, 
Can you describe the steps you're taking to ensure a successful but controlled adoption of this capability? Well, the key is is education. It really is about informing our business leaders and even our 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 frontline individuals that are touching the claim process every time it is the power of this tool itself and make sure that we're surfacing our use cases in a way that make the biggest impact to ultimately our policyholder. We, I have, we have really gone to great lengths to try to make sure that we're having the greatest impact to the policyholder and driving policyholder experience because that's what's important to our customers. Uh, so we are really looking at every scenario, brainstorming for where we can have the biggest impact to driving much better customer experience, enhanced customer experience, and that comes down to things like speed of claim resolution, but also, you know, understanding and forecasting where we have you know, possible pitfalls in the life cycle and anticipating that and avoiding it completely. Just like you know, the focus around avoiding loss, we want to also avoid exacerbating the, the claim process and, and get to a really happy conclusion for the policyholder. So that's our goal is first and foremost, delighting the policyholder using the technology itself. And, and, and that means a happy adjuster as well and you know, a well-equipped and well-informed adjuster. Super informative chat. Ken Tolson, thanks so much for joining the Insure TV. Thank you.